Welcome to Bethlehem Institute of Engineering. Bethlehem Institute of Engineering is affiliated to Anna University Chennai and approved by AICT, New Delhi. This institution was established in the year 2008. Good afternoon everyone. Today we are going to see about the continuation of the first video, Fundamental of Robotic Manipulator. Myself is Jajinish Chon, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering. And my college is Bethlehem Institute of Engineering, Karangal. So, today we are going to see about degrees of freedom and uh, some more chapters, right? So, degrees of freedom, DOF, is defined as the number of input parameters independently controlled each joint by motor. Degrees of freedom of a rigid body are defined as the number of independent movements which has the number of independent position the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the total number of independent displacement or aspects of motion the number of joints determine the man manipulator degrees of freedom right Degrees of freedom is a term used to describe a robot's freedom of motion in three-dimensional space, especially the ability to move forward and backward, up, up and down, and to the left and the right. For each degree of freedom, a joint is required. A joint requires minimum six degrees of freedom uh, to be completely versatile so this is a very very important point your robot requires minimum six degrees of freedom to be completely versatile its uh, movements are clumsier than those of a human hand which has 22 degrees of freedom right so this is a human arm already we discussed in the first video so here you know the coordinates three coordinates x y is that coordinates as there so the number of freedom uh, number of degrees of freedom defines the robot's configuration for example many simple applications require movement along three axes x y is that right so these are the coordinates x y is a coordinate right so first degrees of freedom and second degrees of freedom and third degrees of freedom so first degrees of freedom is x axis and second one is uh, is that axis and third one is OE axis, right? Thus, a uh, minimum of six uh, <clears throat> axes are required. Axes are required to achieve any desirable position and orientation in the robot's work volume or work envelope or workspace, right? Thus, a uh, minimum six axes are required to achieve any desirable position and orientation in the robot's work volume or work envelope or workspace so this is a ellipse type of a shape you know already uh, you would have been studied in your uh, engineering graphics so the locus line right locus point already you discussed in this same so the locus of of the points in the three-dimensional space that can be reached by the wrist by the various combinations of the movements of the of the robot joints from base up to the wrist is called the grass work envelope of the robot right this is a workspace this uh, this robot is uh, used uh, work this uh, locus line locus point right 
the robot motions are accomplished by the means of powered joints right the rigid members connected at the joints of the robot are called links it's a, a very very important thing some terms you sh you, you could study it in this sub uh, subject because it is totally different from other subjects because uh, it having uh, its own uh, terms uh, links and uh, input link output link output link signals and uh, actuators um, and uh, interfactor and grippers these are some uh, technical terms we are used in this subject because mechanical and automobile students not uh, familiar with that right the rigid members connected at the joints of the robot are called links in the link joint link joint link chain the link uh, closer to the base is referred to the input link right and the output link is the, is the one which moves with respect to the input link so this is this one uh, this one is prismatic or linear joint right uh, you you have to uh, see the arrow now so this uh, this could be move in linear direction if you take this uh, say s axis x axis so this move in forward and uh, backward direction of this this is a linear motion right there are basically two types of joints commonly used in industrial robots which are prismatic or linear joints it is denoted by a symbol of p which have sliding or linear motion along an axis right another one is revaluate revaluate is denoted by a symbol of r capital r which exhibits the rotary motion about an axis right so this is a symbol of rotary motion so it it could uh, rotate and uh, in 360 degrees right the link are aligned perpendicular uh, to one another at, at this kind of join right the rotation involves revolution of one link about another right based on the physical configuration of the combination of the revolve revolute or prismatic joints for the three major axes a particular geometry of the work envelope is achieved the time the table shows uh, some of the most common robot work envelopes based on the major axis right so already we uh, saw the axis right just a minute so this uh, first one is x axis so second one is z axis and third one is uh, y axis right so just more i move to the table now so this is axis one this is x axis and this is only the z axis and this is uh, y axis right total revolute so this is this this five type of uh, motions right movement so ro in robot uh, anatomy this uh, five types of uh, types are available right one is uh, cartesian another one is cylindrical uh, the third one is spherical and uh, scars cara means selective compliance assembly robot arm right this is a short form of uh, selective compliance assembly robot arm right uh, and articulator or polar right uh, this uh, five types of robot anatomy is available so in cartesian type of uh, anatomy we have p3 uh, first uh, first axis means x axis is a uh, linear movement only right linear movement only z axis also linear movement and uh, axis 3 y axis also only we have a linear movement only right so revolve revolute or rotational movement is not not available in that cartesian uh, anatomy right another cylindrical we have axis one x axis we have a rotation and another two axis z axis and y axis we have a polar and uh, sorry 
uh, only linear movements right so we have only one rotation revolute movement and spherical means uh, axis um, one x axis and uh, axis two uh, which is z axis we have a rotational motion and in axis three we have linear motion only so in total spherical type of anatomy we have one two types two revolute and scara uh, that is i already spoke the selective compliance assembly robot arm we have uh, the same as the same of spherical type of anatomy we have two rotational motions and one linear motion in articulated type we have uh, three axis rotational motions right x axis z axis and o axis in, in the in all three axes we have rotational motion right so this is a this is a image of cartesian geometry or uh, robot arm right they have only linear motions so it could move like that and it could move like that and it could move like that right this is only a linear motion so it is called cartesian uh, gantry robot arm right so this is a uh, what are the uh, special points are there cartesian gantry robot arm robot which cartesian configuration consists of links connected by linear joints thus the resulting configuration is p so only three uh, axes we have and the three axes uh, they uh, they have only linear motions only though so 3p right already we will discuss uh, this p is the symbol of uh, linear motion right thus three joints correspond to the notation for the moving the wrist up and down in and out and back and forth i already saw the see i pointed in in the image right this work, work envelope, work volume generated by the robot is regular, sorry, rectangular box, example, gantry robot. So, example of Cartesian gantry robot, right? Here we see the example. So, uses perpendicular slides to const construct XYZ axis, hence called XYZ rectangular robot also, right? we have the this motion and we have this motion and we have this motion right only three linear motions commonly used for pick and place work for heavy loads uh, assembly operations handling machine tools or welding operation these are some application of cartesian gantry robot arm these are some examples right images example images the major advantage is ability to do straight line insertion into furnaces easy computation and programming most rigid structure for given length so uh, disadvantages or limitation requires large operating volume exposed uh, guiding surfaces require covering in cor corrosive or dusty environment can only manipulate the object in front of it axis of robot or head to seal so these are some limitations and cylindrical robot arms changing the first prismatic joint of the cartesian coordinate robot by revolute joint to have rpp configuration we get a we get the cylindrical coordinate robot right first first uh, coordinate only we have a x coordinate only we have a rotational motion and other two uh, remain the same right so uh, this is cylindrical robotic arm. The space in which the robot operates and cylindrical in shape, hence the name is cylindrical, right? The revolute joint swinging the arm back and forth about vertical base, base axis. The prismatic joint then move the wrist up and down along vertical axis and in and out along a radial axis, right? So this one only have a we have a rotational motion another these two are a linear motions right it could move uh, upward and forward and this is only the this one also move this direction this arrow direction right this, these are the some examples of cylindrical robot arm so this one only rotate and another two have linear motions only so 
this uh, this is a 3d image okay as there is uh, always some minimum radial position the work envelope is actually the volume between two concentric cylinders commonly used for handling the die casting machines assembly operations handling machine tools and spot welding operation major advantages can reach all around itself rotational axis easy to seal relatively easy programming rigid enough to handle heavy loads though large working space good access into cavities and machine operatings disadvantages or limitations can't reach above itself linear axis is uh, hard to seal won't reach around obstacles exposed driver or difficult to cover from dust and liquids right so the third one is spherical robot arm spherical robot arm right this is the image is a 3d image the second joint of cylindrical co coordinate robot is replaced with revolved joint this product this produces spherical coordinate robot so they have two rotational axes x and z so the y axis remain only linear motion so here the first revolute joint swinging the arm back and forth and the vertical base axis the second revolute joint moves the arm up and down about the horizontal shoulder axis so here we see the image uh, we have a, a x axis rotational movement and we have here also we have a rotational movement okay this one all only a linear motion okay i pointed this this only only a linear motion and another two we have a rotational motion right the prismatic joint moves the wrist radially in and out the work uh, this is the work envelope uh, is uh, the volume between two concentric spheres so this is one example of uh, this robot right commonly used for material handling and die casting or fettling uh, uh, machines and handling machines tools and for arc spark welding etc the advantages large working envelope two rotary drivers are easily sealed against liquid or dust the disadvantages complex coordinates more difficult to visualize control and program exposed to linear drive low accuracy these are some limitations this is the another one is cara robot arm right this is a real image of cara robot we have all rotational motions only one linear motion the same as the uh, spherical robot arm same as the spherical robot arm it we have this but it is selective compliance assembly robot arm right like a spherical coordinate robot arm scara robot selective compliance assembly robot is a robot which at least two parallel revolute joints and having one linear joint for for uh, the position right so this is a 3d image the first uh, uh, revolute axis swings the arm back and forth uh, about base axis vertical shoulder axis the second revolute joint swings the forearm back and forth and about the vertical elbow axis thus two revolute joints control motion in a horizontal plane right so here we have here a rotational motion and here we have a rotation motion this one this third on third axis we have a linear motion only right wrist up and down it gives rigidly in ver vertical direction and uh, compliance in horizontal axis commonly used to for pick and place work and assembly operation with high working speeds main advantage is high speed height axis is rigid large work area for floor space 
moderately easy to program the main disadvantages are limited applications two way to reach a point difficult to program offline highly complex arm right the final one is articulate robot in this we have three rotational axes in articulated coordinate robot all joints are revolute joints it closely resembles that anatomy of human arm okay this is the image right we have three rotational motion first revolute joint swings robots back and forth back and forth about vertical base axis second joint pitches the arm up and down about horizontal shoulder axis the third joint pitches the forearm up and down about horizontal elbow axis right this is a working envelope of the um, articulate robot so commonly used for assembly operations welding weld, weld sealing spray painting and handling at die casting or fettling up machines main advantage is all rotary joints allows for maximum flexibility all joints can be sealed from the environment the main disadvantages are extremely difficult to visualize control and program these robots restricted volume coverage and low accuracy so this is uh, some uh, robot configuration cartesian robot con configuration we have all linear motions and cylindrical uh, we have one rotational motion and two linear motion spherical we have two rotational motion and one uh, linear motion articulated also the same so articulated sorry articulator we have three rotational motion scara we have uh, two rotational motion and one linear motion so this will be we will be see in the next class i'll uh, repeat uh, the today's uh, uh, session just uh, go through the same for your better understanding right so first we saw the degrees of freedom right and three axis coordinates uh, we would study in this uh, session and uh, next we move move to the position and orientation of robots so then link uh, input link and output link and linear positions prismatic or linear joints and rotational joints so it is denoted to uh, denoted by prismatic or linear joints we have uh, denoted by a symbol of p and the rotational or revolute movement we have a symbol of r right and what are the um, uh, types of uh, robot anatom anatomy are available we have five types of ro robot anatomy one is cartesian cylindrical and spherical scara and articulated and we have uh, three axis uh, uh, axis uh, positions right uh, the linear uh, joint linear movements and rotational movements so uh, more rotational movements means the robot is more flexible so it is uh, high efficiently work for uh, in industry in any other operations right so this is a hortician gantry robot arm we have three uh, linear movements so this is some images we already discussed now uh, and uh, we we have to see the disadvantages and the advantages for that and the cylindrical robot arm here we replace uh, one prismatic joint is replaced in um, revolute joint right so the here we have uh, um, one rotational movement and two prismatic joint right so uh, these are the images i we would see in and another type is spherical robot arm so here we we have two rotational and one prismatic joint right so it is 
some more flexible than the other two so fourth one also scara robot it, it also having the two uh, rotational and one uh, prismatic joint so fifth one is articulate robot it having three rotational axis right so it is more flexible than compare compare uh, all the uh, other types okay so this is uh, this is the end of uh, today's session then uh, next session next video we will see the remaining portion thank you very much mm -hmm.